you ready for Time in the Word? Time in the Word. by Rejoice in Jesus Ministries, an on-fire Bible-centered teaching ministry based in Los Angeles, California, with outreaches throughout the United States, stretching from coast to coast. Join us now as Pastor Chester C. Pippen Jr. brings us an exciting, anointed message. I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain whosoever shall say unto this mountain be that, that, okay. is not a mountain necessarily it's the mountain of problems and pressure that's coming against you whosoever shall say unto this mountain or whatever's coming at you be thou removed be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. And be thou cast into the sea, whatever it is you're dealing with. And shall not doubt in his heart. But you shall not doubt in your heart. But shall believe that those things which he saith shall but come to pass. You shall believe that those things that you said, not that God said, that you said. You shall believe that those things that you said shall come to pass. Why me? Because I'm God's son, and he's now made living in me, and he's made me of him, of himself. So I've got to believe that those things that I said shall come to pass, that I said shall come to pass. I got the power to do that, because I'm God's son. <laughs> Amen. But the key is, I shall not doubt in my heart. Now, some of you know the scripture and you can quote it even, but you, you doubt whether it's really happening to you and it's really working for you. You can't have this doubt in your heart. You've got to believe the word says what it says and it means what it says and God cannot lie. So if he says it, then it's true. And that's what's happening with you. So you shall not doubt in your heart that those things that you said shall come to pass. Why? He shall have whatsoever he said. Amen. Says. Then you have whatsoever you say. You got to go through the whole process. So this same principle works on everything you're dealing with. And the reason a lot of people are not having victory in their life and they're having problems and they feel like, oh, I don't know if I can... If I'm ever going to overcome this, because they don't really believe that they're God's, I mean, that they're really God's children. And that you are already dead because he crucified you. And the you that's in this body is really him. He said, I'm not even going to take the chance of teaching them how, how to do it and what to do. He said, I'm just take them on out. Bam. <laughs> and he said, let me take a little bit of me. And I'm going to mold them right in their body. I'm going to take their habits. I'm going to take their thoughts. And all the things that they do. And, and I'm going to make them know that it's them. But it's not I that live. It's not I, but Christ liveth in me. <laughs> Jesus liveth in me. Not I, but Christ liveth in me. Do you guys understand what I'm saying? <laughs> well, what the, what the word says, really. <laughs> so, <clears throat> the Lord wants us to start getting ready for the victory that's getting ready to come. That we're, he said just before the rapture, we're going to come into our glory. And so he's trying to get us ready now to believe that whatever we got to deal with, you can overcome. 
is a lot of people been getting sick. Jesus said he took sickness from us. Are you ready to stand against this? Now, even if it doesn't manifest immediately, you still have the power in you to stand and overcome. Uh, Kenny Copeland said, when he first learned this principle, he said, he, had, he repeated it 960 number times. I forgot exactly the number, but it was over 960 some times. And he said, he finally got to that last number, and when he said it, all of a sudden, it hit him. Wow, the power of God's in me. And he said the power of God came out, and he, re he rebuked it, and he was fine after that. And <laughs> Amen. Another thing, speaking of, of Copeland, one time, uh, he, he, was, he was, I forgot where he said he was. Anyway, he said he, he was having problems and his back was out and all that. And so he had prayed over himself and nothing was happening. And so he's, he finally said, uh, Lord, I don't understand. What's happening? Why, why, how come I'm not having victory? And he said, is it because of that sin I did last week? He didn't say what the sin was. That's not our business. But whatever he did, he felt it was, it was something that could hinder him. So he said, Lord, is it because of the sin I did last week? And the Lord said, what sin? He said, you know, the one I did last week. And the Lord said, what sin? He said, oh, come on, Lord. You know this word. And he said it again, what sin? And so then it dawned on him, the Lord's trying to tell me something. So he says he cast them into the sea of his forgetfulness. So God was like, why are you asking me that? It's, not, it's, not, it's non-existent. I cast it into my forgetfulness. I don't remember it. It's not existent. So why don't you just stop acting like you're defeated and this is a legal right the devil has because you did whatever you think you did. He said, it doesn't matter. I already defeated it. And not only did I defeat it, I cast it into my forgetfulness. I don't even remember you did it. And so he said, he learned the lesson at that point. And we need to have the same lesson because we got the same problem or same authority. God's ready to cast everything that we do wrong into his forgetfulness. You got to start believing you're who you say or who he says you are. Yeah. <laughs> and so... <clears throat> One day I, I was sitting in my room and he said, uh, you know, I don't really need you. <laughs> the Lord comes, comes hard sometimes. <laughs> he said, I don't need you. He said, anything you do, you may think you're pretty good at it, but you, you're not important. And so then he said, but because I love you and because you're my child, I'm giving you the privilege of standing in the power to overcome this. And I'm giving you the gift to, to cause this thing, whatever you're dealing with, to you, you to have victory over it. And he says, you need to understand I've got angels that can do everything you want to do better than you. But I'm giving you the victory and giving you the privilege of doing things and overcoming it. And so that you can use my power in you. Understand how important you are to me 
because you're acting like me and you're walking like me and thinking like me. In Jesus' name. <laughs> Praise God. So you may not feel like it and you may not think of it right off, but if you take control of it and understand that God cannot lie, and he said you got the victory over it, and it's not even you, it says it's him in you, in your body. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Do you understand what that means? So if you start getting the headache again tomorrow, you better tell it to shut up and get out, of, get out of my head. In the name of Jesus, go away. And you need to say, in Jesus' name. And there's, there's times we've had people pray over who have cancer, who have uh, all kinds of disease, major diseases and conditions. And they've gotten healed right away. I can give you, I can tell you several times that this has happened. My wife ha has this ability, especially with kids. I remember they, they brought this kid in and he had, he had AIDS. And so he was supposed to die within, within the week. And Vonda laid her hands on him. And she said, in the name of Jesus. And they took that kid back the next day. And the, and the AIDS was gone. Yes. The next day. <laughs> and then Whitney brought in some guy. He had something that was just, I don't remember whether it was AIDS or, or cancer or what, what was it? Do you remember? Anyway, they brought him in, and, and we, he stopped after, after the service was over, and, and she called him up again, and she prayed over him, and he got healed yeah. immediately. <clears throat> and so God has given us the authority to do these things. He's no respecter person. He doesn't do it with me because I'm the pastor. He didn't do it with her because she's assistant pastor. He gives it because she's his child. Yeah. And he loves her. Yeah. And he did it with me because he loved me. Yeah. And he will do it with you the same way. Yeah. It's time for you guys to start having it. <laughs> See him with this one. <laughs> I don't know who's been hindering you, but it's time for it all to go away. <laughs> you go back to first, Second Corinthians five. Let's start at seventeen again. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, if any man be in Christ, are you in Christ? Yes. All right. Any man or woman be in Christ. He is a new creature. You are a new creature. Really, it means you are a new creation a brand new created being that never was before. You are a new creation. Old things are passed away. All old things that was in you that was working against you has passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Check it out. Behold, all things have become new. And those new things are? Of God. Of God. <laughs> Go ahead, read it further. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and <laughs> hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. He's given us the ministry of reconciliation, that we can reconcile whatever's happening with the power of the Lord in us. Go ahead. To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us so, the word wait, of wait, wait, wait. He, he said, not imputing, let's read that again. Not imputing their trespasses unto them. Not imputing the trespasses, your trespasses, 
up to you anymore. God says, no, I'm not even counting it. It's like when Copeland did it. He said, he said, uh, what sin? <laughs> so whatever you did, God said, what problem? I'm giving you the, I'm, I'm washing it away for you, and I'm giving you authority to overcome it. Boy, that's good. <laughs> did God lie to you? Is he lying to you now? But I don't feel like that. Well, then God's a lie, and you, your, your word is higher. You really believe that? <laughs> well, then I think maybe you better reassess your, what your thinking process. Go ahead. Not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. <laughs> He's committed unto us the word of rec reconciliation. Hallelujah. Is that good? <laughs> yeah. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. Amen. <laughs> What's the next line? For he hath made him to be sent for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. He did it. Yeah. Amen. He did, he did a transfer. He, he who knew no sin came and gave himself to you. Took your mess who had been doing all kinds of things, pulled it out and said, now you're me. Go do it. <laughs> Man, that's good. Yeah. All right. So look at uh, Romans 8, verse 30. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. Huh. What shall then, what shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Amen. If God be for us, who can be against us? He's not only for you, he's in you. And so who can be against you? Now do you believe it? <laughs> Yeah, you should be getting, yeah, man, yes, I do. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> so, the secret to overcoming is believing that God is in you, reconciling whatever the problem is. He also is hearing you when you said, be thou removed and get out of here in the name of Jesus. He's saying that all you got to do is not doubt in your heart that it's going to really happen. But you got to, but you got to believe that those things that you say shall come to pass. Then it will come to pass and you shall have whatsoever you say. Notice he's not saying what, you, what God said. He's saying what you say. He's given you authority because you have his, his person inside your shell of a person, of however you were made to look. He took your body and took your old man or your old spirit out, threw it away, put himself in there. And so now he's living in you in your righteousness or your unrighteousness or whatever you were. <laughs> he's now there and he's overcoming it. You guys, this is, it's miraculous actually. <laughs> this is an awesome thing. If you guys get a hold of this, 
no more I come by come to you and tell you you're you're no good, you're not strong enough. No, oh, that's the devil come by you anymore. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. We've got the victory. We have <laughs> <laughs> so if something comes the devil comes at you and tries to tell you some crazy stuff tell him look I'm born again I'm not even here it's not, it's not I because I've been crucified it's not even I that live I'm, I'm the one that's living in me is him it's Jesus you think you're better than Jesus you just get out of here in Jesus name <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> we got, we, we've got to get this down. Because God has some things for us to do. And he wants us to be ready for it. And he wants us to stop feeling defeated. And he, this attitude that I don't know if I can overcome and all this kind of stuff, whatever. Look. God can, is there anything that God cannot overcome? No. And so if he's in you, you think just because he changed location, he, he's not lost his power? <laughs> no, he hasn't, he hasn't lost his power. His power is now operating through you. <laughs> I mean, this is what the word says. I'm not making this up. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Are you guys going to put this on? The Lord wants you to have total victory. You know, in the Old Testament, when, when David, you know, and, and uh, Goliath came up, and he, and all the all the uh, people uh, of God, they're all in fear. He said, uh, what's going on with you guys? You letting this uncircumcised Philistine just run us raggedy like that? How come you, some of you ain't going out there and take, taking him out? And his brother came over there and said, now nah, there you are in your little pride again. And we knew you come over here saying this stuff. You don't know what you're talking about. And so he said, finally he sat there and watched him for a while. And he said, this is crazy. Yeah, I'm going to go out there and get it myself if you guys don't do it. And so he told that to Saul. Saul said, here, let me give you my armor. And then he said, no, this is too heavy and it's too big for me. I don't want it. He said, I'm going to go out there on my own. And so he went to the, to, the, to the creek and he picked up five smooth stones. And he took his little, you know, they, the Jews have this thing that they swoop, whoo, and they can shoot it off like a, like a bullet almost. Yeah. And they send that rock. And so he, Goliath was sitting there talking all kind of trash. I'm going to send you, get you ready for the fowls of the air. They're going to have a meal over you. And he said, yeah. He said, look here, man, let me tell you something. I'm, I'm the king, uh, child of the Most High. And I'm telling you, you get ready to go down. <laughs> he didn't say it exactly like that, but that's what he said. And so... Goliath got all bad, and David took out his little thing, and whoa, whoa, bam! Hit him dead in the middle of his head. Knocked him out. He went over there, took his own sword, and he went, whoa, cut his head off. <laughs> and so, and so, you know, everybody was in shock. Both the people of Goliath and the Philistines, and, and the and the Christian, I mean, well, not Christian, the the Jewish victory, children of of, uh, of God. Uh, when they saw what really happened, 
They said, you mean this little David could go do that? And they got, they got encouraged after that, and they started winning a whole lot of things. They had wars and all that, and they was ready. That's the same thing God wants for us. He wants us to be ready. Are you ready? Are you prepared? It's the power of God in you. Hallelujah. (laughs) Amen. (laughs) What does it say? God cannot lie. So if he said it, we can believe it. And if we take it and believe his word and put it in in the practice, there's nothing that can stop us. (laughs) Hallelujah. Amen. (laughs) Hallelujah. Glory to God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. We would like to send you a tape of this entire message. For any donation of $5 or more, we will send you a CD. For any donations of $12 or more, we will send you a DVD. Please write to us at Rejoice in Jesus Ministries, P.O. Box 47775, Los Angeles, California, 90047, or call 323-REJOICE. Please mention tape offer number TITW14134. That is tape offer number TITW14134. Hi. You know the Bible says that all things are upheld by the power of this word? That means when you put the word in your heart, it will produce life and health to all your flesh. It will also produce faith so that whatever you come up against, you can overcome it. But remember, you won't have the victory you desire unless you make a decision to not allow anything to get in the way of your intimacy with Jesus, nor allow anything to distract you from your time in Thank you for watching Time in the Word. If you are blessed by today's message, we'd love to hear from you. You can write us at P.O. Box 47775, Los Angeles, California, 90047. Or call us at 323-735-6923. That's 323-REJOICE. And if you're in the Los Angeles area, visit our worship service on Saturday nights at 7.30 p.m., 1304 Cochran Avenue, corner of Cochran and Packard Street. And again, Thank you for watching Time in the Word.